in ancient times, myths belonged to all of society, to be invoked and represented whenever the occasion suggested. Today's mythic heroes are more constrained, copyrighted. Or, if they take special mechanical form, they can be patented. One major concern of copyright law has been to shield legal owners against those who appropriate another's work and present it as their own. The history of copyright as idea and legislation reveals an increasingly complex conception of artistic ownership. The idea for Superman came to me in a flash one night. As a high school student, I had crushes on several attractive girls who either didn't know I existed, or didn't care. As a matter of fact, some of them looked like they hoped I didn't exist. It occurred to me, what if I was real terrific? What if I had something special going for me, like jumping over buildings or throwing cars around or something like that? Then maybe they would notice me. That night when all the thoughts were coming to me, the concept came to me that Superman could have a dual identity, and that in one of his identities he could be meek and mild, as I was, and wear glasses, the way I do. This character, he would be a powerful man, but he would pretend to be a worm, like me. No one would know about his secret power. I brought the idea to my friend, Joe Shuster. He went crazy for it. He was like me, a mild guy. We made up some drawings for it that week. I had a lot more free time than my parents' generation, and it was up to me to decide what was important to me in life. I wanted to be with other people like me. We were. A little unusual I guess you'd say. Of course, now we can see the power of this character. But it was a different America then. Things back then were really weighted towards the companies. We had no way to get our ideas out there without someone paying to print something. We let a lot of people know about our idea. A lot of the editors just didn't see it at first. I loved history, so I knew that that is often just the way it went. The big companies at least were polite and told us to come back if we thought of anything else. Rejection was hard at first, but we had plenty of other ideas to work on.
persistence, persistence, persistence. There is a lot of me in the character. I have a lot of qualities that people can't see at first. The early Superman also liked to use his power to have fun with people. He really enjoyed running over power lines while tormenting criminals. I knew I had to get ahead of the pack, and Joe and I spent months working on these early stories. It takes five years, but National sees their Superman strip and wants to publish it. I knew I was selling the copyright to Superman. And I knew it could be a very commercial property. But I'm a hard worker, and I knew there would be more ideas. I wanted Superman to succeed as much as anyone. I thought that over time, the company would recognize my connection with the character. He was me. The hidden me. I also prepared some other ideas to pitch to them at a later time. I wanted to work on a humor strip. There is something deep inside me that needs for people to take me seriously. I think people take the stories with action and drama a bit more seriously. I mean Superman is about real life. But I've always enjoyed humor. I felt like this contract was an opportunity to transition. I had Joe draw up an idea. Funny man. The bosses wouldn't end up liking it. I liked having the other guys around to help me think of ideas. And actually, they all love Superman as much as I did. Once we started producing content regularly, life was a blur. I finally had a bit of money. I moved to New York City, with my wife. The worry in my bones, was that it had all gotten out of control, and I would get swindled. That's the way it always seemed to go for me. After about a year, I asked for a $10 raise. You would have thought I asked to marry his daughter. An oatmeal company approached us about doing some television ads with Superman. This was a big deal, because it meant my suspicion was right. Superman is a natural pitchman. National handled everything. But I liked the ads a lot. The oatmeal, not so much. I was very successful at a very young age, and people took me seriously. I was a good boy. They did a story about me. I started to wonder why I wasn't getting more from what we were earning. I was drafted. For the war.
There I met a lawyer. He had a lot of ideas about what course of action I could take. We sued them to get my copyright back. They severed my contract. And the trial didn't go as planned. It wasn't the total loss, but it was pretty bad. I felt like, hey, I deserve a part of this. It seemed unfair. It was the first time I perceived the limits of my own creativity. I worried that my new experiences weren't prompting new ideas. I conceived of Superman back when I really needed him. To change myself. Why was nothing coming to me now? I was just getting more and more stressed out. I didn't know where to turn. I tried to break into advertising. Superman was just such a natural marketing character, I felt like I could have an edge. But I had a hard time convincing other people of relevance. A few guys were impressed though. I ended up writing some stories for Archie Comics. It wasn't so bad. All of a sudden, the whole scene shifted. The kinds of stories I liked no longer sold. And superheroes weren't as popular. I never got mad at anyone younger than me, for being at the right place at the right time. But it seemed to me, I'd created something pretty important. Sometimes in the dark mornings that could be enough to conceal me. I mean, that's more than most people. The thing that gnawed at me was, I felt like I'd done it to myself. I'm a passive person. I kind of live and let live, and it opens me up to having people walk all over me. The government let creators appeal to regain copyright in the late 60s. I was exhausted at the time, but I knew it was the right thing to do. I did my best, but the lawyers for National, now called DC Comics, didn't let up for a second, those punks. I tried to ignore the whole thing for the next three years. But eventually someone asked if I'd heard about this Superman movie. I was honestly excited and terror-struck at the same time. I felt like I'd been hit with a mallet. The newspaper reported that the screenwriter was paid $3 million to write the script. That's what put me over the edge. I'd barely gotten any compensation for creating the character. I channeled my rage into a letter. I put a curse on the movie. Don't go see Superman, says his father. Says him. It was very unlike me. Something had come unmoored in me. I've always understood showmanship, and in my experience, it makes you do things that seemed undoable. I finally got mad. And I realized I had more to gain by going public. The press started to reprint parts of the letter. It started the movement. A lot of my old buddies, who now were important people, fought for me inside the companies. I knew they weren't gods, we weren't getting the copyright back. But together, we forced DC Comics to cough up 20000 a year for me and my family, forever.
it was less than it was worth, but after all this, I'll take it. From all the press coverage, I started to be in the public eye again. Someone paid for a limo to take me to the premiere of Superman the movie. It was very fun. The comics world also rediscovered me. I started being asked back to conventions, or to meet fans. I just got back from one in New York. They gave me an award.